Hey guys, so I am going to respond to Alpha Investments going down to zero video. Unhinged Magi has a video very similar, as does every sports card investor, including Lootbox TV. They did a live stream where it seems like there is now dread. So like the Jeff Wilson of sports card investor would say, hey, what's up with the negativity? You know, why are you guys being so negative? And things are going very poorly. Crypto is losing a lot of money, Bitcoin in particular. NFTs are dropping like flies. Um, I think a Zuki NFT or whatever it was, it was found out the guy was a scammer. <laughs> you know, probably not worth investing. And that project that looked like it would be the next big project is kind of sidelined at this moment in time until more information comes out about who is in charge of the project and are they planning a rug pull because it seems like they were involved in shady activities in previous projects. You have the scenario of sports cards, Pokemon cards, you have the scenario of the stock market. S&P 500 is down, I think 16, 17, 18% as of today. And it does not look good. You got a president who has very little understanding of the economy, if none. Um, I remember there was an article recently on LinkedIn about this company called like Emergence and they paid 330 million or some insane amount of money. Uh, yeah, 330, 340 million dollars for this company. The company doesn't, I don't believe it makes vaccines. It's just supposed to store them and, and then they contaminated and lost and had to dump 400 million the reason 400 million is so important because that's like one vaccine for every American and because of poor storage, very bad working conditions and incredibly overpaid workers that didn't give a shit. So that's kind of what I expect from the government. Was it like, was it 340 million or is it 340 billion? At some point you just forget these, these numbers are just like whatever, right? Um, but yeah, that company that was supposed to, I believe, deliver it, they had to dump all their inventory because I think they were missing a main ingredient or something that would actually, so imagine getting a vaccine and it didn't have what it was supposed to have. And then you go around, you know, and then you get sick. It, you know, I, I don't trust, uh, when the US government gives contracts out, they give contracts out to their friends and family. This has been shown time and time again. If you watch my other channel, I go into great detail about all the, you know, the Puerto Rico incident, the where you had starving people in Puerto Rico and the government was like, hmm, let's feed these people. We have a $300 million to do so. Now let's go out and find somebody who can give them meals. Oh, what about this one woman who is the aunt of a relative who decides who to give the contract to? Can this one woman make 10 million meals for $300 million? Or was it 100 million meals? Some insane amount of meals. Let's look at her background. See, previously failed to make like 100 handbags. All right, let's go with her. I mean, I'm positive she can deliver. And yes, you know, it, it, in the government, it's not about the quality of work. It's not about how ethical you are. It's just about who you know. Look at the uh, Afghanistan where all those weapons are left. Are you telling me all these contractors and companies we pay all these billions if not trillions of dollars to, they didn't have an exit plan to like, wh what's going on here? I, I don't understand. Like nobody had an exit plan according to Pentagon, some insane amount of money was left uh, in terms of weapons, like not like destroyed. They didn't even destroy them. They just could pick them up and resell them to other countries. So when I think about the US government, I think, wow, you know, when I, I can make it very simple. I can look at my construction on the road when I wanna go to Chinatown, I wanna travel and it's always shut down. And then I look at why is it shut down? Are there anybody working? Is there anyone doing stuff? And the answer is no. But my God, they're gonna get overtime. My God, those construction workers are being paid 200, 250 or somebody in upper management who got the contract is, uh, I mean, they're doing well. You don't need to worry about those dudes. They're not working and they're getting paid, which is the American way for the government. So with that rant over, there is this fear. 
And the fear is very simple. The fear is that people will lose their jobs and the the inflation has just, I think it's 8.1% right now, 8.3%, which last year was 8.5%. I mean, it's over 8% according to the US government. I think it's like higher. I think it's probably 20% if you would actually calculate the things that you need, which is gas, electricity is higher, food, food cost is astronomically high now. Like I have to start shopping at like Walmart now because I can't afford to Whole Foods. I mean, that's how bad it is. But anyway, back to the Rudy video. Like I didn't watch it. I don't watch his videos. There's a lot of promotion that he does that I don't agree with and therefore I don't watch his videos. But I, I did watch the some of Unhinged, probably like two minutes, and I did watch Lootbox TV's video. So I did watch Lootbox TV. I like those guys. They are sponsored, of course, by that collector company, which again, I'm not a fan of. Uh, when, when you have all these apps and they're sponsoring content creators, not a huge fan because obviously in that case, it does bias them in some way, right? When they're making reviews and they have to make sure their sponsor is un not unhappy with what they're saying. Yeah, it's gonna to be tough, guys. If you bought a bunch of boxes, like flesh and blood boxes, meta, dude, like the, the problem here is it's really easy to buy these things. Have you ever tried to sell them? Because it's not easy to sell and you're gonna get lowballed into oblivion. Or you're gonna to have to pay immense fees on eBay and then, or, and then have, so like when you buy a box or a package from Rudy Chan, it's really easy. You just pay him, you pay the monthly Patreon fee, very similar to Amazon. I never understood why you know Rudy hates Amazon when he is the Amazon. I mean, I, I understand, like isn't the models the same? You pay a monthly subscription fee, you get discounted products, you buy the discounted products if you want, you don't buy them if you don't want, just like Amazon. And then it gets delivered to your home and then you put them in your closet. And then hopefully one day it becomes very valuable, but people don't understand the dangers there are in selling. You know, when you try to sell your Black Lotus, you don't know there's a Nazi with 31 felonies on the other side. And you're going to steal your Black Lotus. Then he's going to hire Vintage Magic to make a video trashing you. You don't know if that dude is going to open your box, doesn't like what they got in your flesh and blood box, and then send it back to you and report it to eBay. eBay will always side on the buyer side. Now, let's say that you want to do Mercario, you want to do local, like StockX doesn't even do, do Flesh and Blood, but they just do sneakers and Pokemon. I guess you could do Flesh and Blood. I don't know how that works. But now you have a toxic asset, a toxic asset during a very terrible time and you might have lost your job. The guy I was just talking to a few moments ago, he said he was getting evicted and he has four kids. Like I, I just got a text message from a guy when I'm trying to buy his collection and I don't know if he's trying to scam me, but it doesn't seem, I've been talking to him for a while. I don't think he's gonna sell it to me. So I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna move on. You know, I told him I'm gonna move on. I think, you know, we've, I've negotiated. I've always give you my best price. And even beyond that, I've given a premium. I think, you know, this is the best I can do. I help you identify which cards are valuable, which cards are not. Uh, and I've spent probably two to three hours working with you on, you know, figuring out your, what your collection's worth. I made you a decent offer. I sent you a degrading thing to look at. I sent you all the information you need. And, you know, now he's talking about getting his cards graded by PSA and so on. And at this point, you know, hey, like, you know, more power to you if you can do that. But his last text was, I'm getting evicted, I have four kids. I mean, I, I should bring, actually my phone's right here. Ah, this one a few times I have my phone. Okay, let me see if I can block his, obviously I wouldn't want you to. Um, um, me and my four, four kids are getting evicted. Okay, so here. Oh, I can't even show you. Okay, can you see it? Uh, it says, I understand, thanks for the good luck, me and my four kids getting evicted kind of need it, I'll, I'll laugh out loud. Um, yeah, we've been talking pretty much via text almost every day for about half an hour, maybe an hour a day, figuring out what his collection, his collection isn't 
worth that much. It does have four dual lands, but obviously at this point in time, he's got to sell his collection. Uh, he's got to sell it. And this is where we are. Things are going to get really bad. If you own stocks and bonds, things have been incredibly bad. If you own the real estate, the real estate is on the down. If you own watches, a Rolex or a Richard Mill, you know that the luxury market, which I would consider card games in part of, is doing very poorly. The watches kept going up and then finally they're going down. Now, is that a correction? You know, all these watch dealers say it's a correction. They're never going to say the market is collapsing because they need to continue to sell. Nobody's going to buy a watch when they think the market's collapsing or consign a watch, which is a lot of their business. So they always use the term correction, which makes it seem like, oh, things are OK. Nah, man, things are bad, man. I have a few expensive pieces and I have looked into like the watch market and my one of my pieces could easily sell like two months ago i got an offer of 29,000 for it right now it's selling marketplace for 22 and a half it's lost a lot of value and i'm like wow you know that's not the it, it's lost so much value it's almost like sports cards it's now returned to where i bought it at and you know i was enjoying the gains right and then the drop so the gains are very steady up but the drop is like off a cliff and we're going to see that in flesh and blood. We're going to see that in meta zoo. We're going to see that in a lot of these cards because like I said, you only have so much money to play so many card games. If you love magic, I, I that's why all the meta zoo are the uh, flesh and blood content creators. They always put ma magic in their title, to, you know, magic, this magic. Oh, we're going to beat magic. Oh, we're going to destroy magic. Oh, it's a better game than magic. I don't think it is. I've never played it, but it's hard for me to believe that a brand new game, a relatively new game, is somehow going to overtake Magic the Gathering. For all I criticize Magic the Gathering, it has great IP, it has great past cards. I mean, when you play Revised, it's a great set. I mean, my gosh, it's a really great Savannah Lion, you got Sarah Angel, you got Armageddon, you got Wrath of God, you got Dual Lands, right? I mean, the Dual Lands aren't really that fun to play with, honest to God, but, you know, I remember uh, when I was a kid and my friend John, who's now a very famous doctor, doctor, incredibly famous doctor, and at John Hopkins. And he come he, he was so creative. We used to be all we only have monocolor decks. Then he created a deck called Equality, and it was a black deck plus a white deck combined to one, and that was deck tech. I remember being so like blown away because I was playing the crawl warm. So I'm playing the elves and the crawl worms and the, you know, I mean, I was playing that deck. Uh, and I was like, whoa, that's tricky, right? Because we had mana drop, so we didn't really play the, the real way that you were supposed to play. I mean, it's lunchtime. Lunchtime is half an hour, 40 minutes. So you got to get these games done real fast. So everyone drops their mana go. And then the quality deck was, you know, it's got, it was mind blowing at the time because it had the best removal. It had Swords to Plowshare, it had Terra, which was a re very good piece of removal at the time. Um, I don't know what other, Sarah Angel, obviously, if you can play Sarah Angel, you play Sarah Angel. I mean, it's, I do remember my Crawl Worm though, my 6-4 for six, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, it was a lot more powerful in the mana drop era where you, if you had like six, I mean, the ideal hand as a little kid was six forest and one Crawl Worm. Then, then you drop your six wars, turn one, and then you put, play out your crawl worm. Very little things that the opposite side can do to beat you at that point in time. Hi <laughs> right, guys.